Hi, welcome to the continuing uh, class on fatigue. Uh, our next step is to ask ourselves what happens if um, our fatigue problem involves loads that are not uh, completely uh, uh, that are not completely reversed. So let me give me one second while I sort this thing out. Okay, there you go. Okay, so we are now going to look at a situation where the the stress versus sigma versus time looks like this. So there is a mean stress, sigma mean is sigma max plus sigma min over 2 and then alternating say stress is sigma max minus sigma min over 2. So sigma a. Suppose you have this situation. Turns out that what happens is the following. If you if you plot uh, sigma versus so I'm going to plot sigma alternate here, sigma mean here, and what happens is a very simple thing. Here is the ultimate tensile strength. So if your first cycle exceeds ultimate tensile strength, it's going to fail. So everything fails here. Here what happens is um, this is endurance limit S E. Okay, so if you are at the endurance limit, life is infinite. As you come down, life goes down. And so typically speaking, what we will do is, we will draw a straight line here. In reality, what happens is, the, the points, the, the failure points lie something like this. We'll, we'll talk about this. Here is the sigma yield. So in many cases, we will actually cut it, uh, cut it down here like this. So that this is the allowable region. Suppose I, I don't want the endurance limit. Suppose I want only 10 to the 3 cycles. What happens is this is sigma f, sf. Sorry, sf will be higher here. sf. And you will get a curve. That's the 10 to the 3 cycle curve. So our equation will look like this. will look like um, sigma alternate divided by uh, Sn plus sigma mean divided by Sut must be equal to 1 for a life of n cycles. And the second condition is this is condition A. Condition B is sigma max must be less than Sy for static failure. Typically, this is very, very stringent. Sometimes we may lose at it. This, by the way, is called uh, roughly the Goodman line. There's another version which says what is called the ASME uh, elliptic line and that says sigma A over Sn squared plus sigma mean over Sut squared, sometimes it is Sy squared, square root must be less than or equal to 1. This is the ASME elliptic criterion. Typically speaking, this is reasonable for most purposes. This is conservative. For example, example, let us say I had 1020, um, 1050 HRC and I am applying mean stress sigma m equals, I don't know, uh, 20 megapascals and sigma alternate equals 50 megapascals. The question is, will it fail by that does it have an endurance limit? The answer to that comes from the following. So endurance limit sigma e for this is 0 0.5 times 
630 megapascals that is sigma ut which turns out to be uh, 315 megapascals so what we have to check is the following so i got at sigma sy is about uh, 500 megapascals so now I have all the information that I want. I'm going to use the ASME elliptic and that will give me um, sigma A over sigma E square plus sigma M over SY square square root must be equal to 1 over factor of 50. That's what it means. So if this is less than 1 you are okay if you are greater than 1 it's going to fail okay so let us see what happens so this turns out to be square root of 20 over 315 square plus um, sorry 50 over 315 square plus 20 over 500 square let's see how much that is uh, so we can do that right here that so I'm going to enter it here we we'll close the ink tools. Close it, close it, close. There you go. So we go up here and that's equal to square root of 50 over 315 square plus 20 over 500 square. Point one six. So you've got a huge factor of safety here. So a factor of safety equal to one of equals one over this six. So you got a factor of safety of six. Okay. So that's how we do. So in reality, we will be quite safe because most of the points lie outside. You can do the same calculation for any given uh, number of cycles by replacing SE with SN and you will see that in class when we do some example problems okay and that's it thank you